Okay, so this is for the second page of your Objective 1 Notes Extra Practice, numbers 8 through 10. Um, we looked at plotting the coordinate point and converting to our rectangular coordinates. Um, now because we already did, or there already is in the other Extra Practice video, um, Extra Practice graphing polar coordinate points, so look for the ones, the examples 1 through 4. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with examples 8 through 10 here, extra practice, doing the graphing portion. I'm going to focus primarily on the conversion. However, I am going to do a rough sketch of our, our graph just to help us check our conversion. Okay, so rough sketch of our graph. 3 pi over 2, what would that radial line be? Okay, well, that'd be down here, dotted in the reverse direction. Okay, and then it's a positive R, so we know we would be going two out along that radial line. If it was a negative R, we'd be going the reverse direction. So I'm looking for a coordinate point that sits me on that lower part of my y-axis as I do my conversion here. Okay, so again, the conversion is our big focus. If you need extra practice with graphing points, like what we just did a real rough sketch on, go to the other extra practice video, the examples one through four extra practice. Okay? Conversion, we have two relationships, x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Okay, so for this particular polar coordinate, my r is two cosine of my theta, so sorry, this should be times, cosine of my theta, which is 3 pi over 2. So go ahead and take a moment. 2 times, what is the cosine of 3 pi over 2? Okay, well the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And so 2 times 0 is 0. Okay, y equals my r2 times my sine of 3 pi over 2. So go ahead and take a moment. What's the sine of 3 pi over 2? Okay, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, so this is negative 2. So my coordinate point is 0, negative 2. Taking a quick look at my sketch, does that coordinate point make sense with my sketch? 0, negative 2 would sit me on that lower y-axis, so yeah, my conversion here makes sense. Okay, next up, we have our 4, negative 11 pi over 6. Again, if this is your extra practice, I recommend don't just watch the video. Pause it, try them on your own. You check your answers when you're ready. Okay, so negative 11 pi over 6, where would that radial line be? That would be in the first quadrant here. And we have a positive r, so we're going out 4 along that line, so we're looking at kind of here, roughly speaking. And then our conversion, I'm not going to rewrite these relationships, it's going to be the same relationship for all of them. So my r is 4 times my cosine of my theta. Okay, we'll go ahead and take a moment. What is the cosine of negative 11 pi over 6? Okay, well, negative 11 pi over 6 is in the first quadrant, so everything's positive there. So the question really is, what's the cosine of pi over 6? Okay, and that would be root 3 over 2. 4 and the 2 would simplify to give me 2 root 3. Okay, my y is my r times the sine of my theta. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment. What's the sine of negative 11 pi over 6? Okay, well that would be first quadrant pi over 6, 1 half. And 4 times 1 half is 2. So my xy coordinate is 2 root 3, 2. Does that make sense with where I know my coordinate point is located? Well, 2 root 3, 2 would be in the first quadrant. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, last but not least, we have our sketch here, real quick. Negative 2 pi over 3, where would that radial line be? Well, that would be in the third quadrant. Root 5, um, positive, so we're going along that radial line. Root 5 is a little bit more than 2, definitely less than 3, so we're looking at kind of here-ish. Because 2 would be root 4, 3 would be root 9, so more than 2, but definitely way less than 3. 
And for our conversion, we have x equals my r, which is root 5, cosine of my theta. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment. What's the cosine of negative 2 pi over 3? Okay, well we're in the third quadrant, so both cosine and sine, when we get to the y, are going to be negative. And for pi over 3, cosine would be 1 half. And so this is negative root 5 over 2. Okay, y is my r, so root 5, times sine of my theta, negative 2 pi over 3. Okay, so go ahead and take a moment. What is the sine of negative 2 pi over 3? Okay, well that would be negative root 3 over 2. So my y is negative root 15 over 2. And again, it's good to always just do a quick little spot check. Does that coordinate actually make sense with where I plotted my sketch here? Well, this negative x, negative y would put me in the third quadrant, and so yeah, it makes sense. Okay, last set of extra practice problems are ones like examples 11 through 13. Um, in your notes, which are going to be uh, plotting our point, and again, I'm just going to do a real quick sketch for that plot the point, um, converting and then naming your additional coordinate points. And I know in the notes we only had you do two. Um, in your homework, you're going to have to name all three, so for this extra practice, I will name all three um, at, when that's applicable, okay? Okay, so here we go. Uh, quick sketch of our coordinate point here, negative 2 root 3. Um, again, I don't know exactly what that is, but I can approximate it. I know that if this was root 1, that that would be negative 2. I know if that was root 4, it would be negative 4. And so we're looking at between negative 2, negative 4, closer to the negative 4 side, because root 3 is closer to root 4 than it is to root 1. Um, and so we're looking at a little bit more than negative 3, so probably, you know, kind of roughly negative 3.3, negative 3.4. Um, again, if you are not comfortable doing that kind of a, approximation idea and you wanted to actually like plug into your calculator what 2 root 3 is, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, but if I remember, it's right around 3.3, 3.4 in that range, okay? Um, and then negative 2, so we're going down negative 2, so my coordinate point is right there, okay? So let me rough sketch. Okay, converting. Converting, we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and we have tangent theta equals y over x. Okay, um, so my x squared, negative 2 root 3 squared would be 2 squared or 4 times 3, which is 12. My y squared would be uh, negative 2 squared or 4. 12 plus 4 is 16, and square rooting both sides, we get that r is plus or minus 4. Okay, my tangent here, tangent of theta is equal to my y, which is the uh, negative 2, over my x, which is negative 2 root 3. So tangent theta, if those negatives 2 reduce, negative 2's would reduce, that would be 1 over root 3. So for those who are comfortable looking at it that way, great. Or if you wanted to rationalize the denominator, multiply top and bottom, you could do root 3 over 3. If you're more comfortable figuring out theta that way, you could, you could rationalize the denominator. And so then theta equals, well, what angle gives me a tangent of 1 over root 3? Okay, well, that angle would be pi over 6. And then I want my tangent to be positive, so I'm looking for the pi over 6 angle in the first quadrant, which is pi over 6, and the third quadrant. Okay, the pi over 6 angle in the third quadrant is 7 pi over 6. And then their respective negative coterminals, so if I subtracted 2 pi from each, I would be at negative 11 pi over 6 and negative 5 pi over 6. Okay, and so my four coordinate points, my initial one and my three others are going to be something pi over 6, 
something 7 pi over 6, something negative 11 pi over 6, and something negative 5 pi over 6. The question is, what r do I want to use for each of those angles? And so that's going to be determined by where my point is located. My point is located, remember, down here in the third quadrant. Well, if I sketch the radial line for pi over 6, that radial line is in the first quadrant. So if I use a positive 4 on a pi over 6 radial line, I'll be going out along that angle into the first quadrant. And I don't want to end up in the first quadrant. I actually want to end up in the third quadrant. I want to go the reverse direction of pi over 6. And so I want a negative r to send me in that reverse direction. So I'm going to use negative 4. Okay. Versus 7 pi over 6, if I graphed 7 pi over 6, that radial line, I'll do this one in blue, is in the third quadrant. And so I want a positive r for that one that sends me along that angle, and so I'm going to use positive 4 for that. Negative 11 pi over 6 has the same radial line as pi over 6, so I'll be doing negative 4. And negative 5 pi over 6 has the same radial line as 7 pi over 6, and so I'll be doing positive 4. Okay, next up we have negative 2, negative 2. Quick sketch. Negative 2, negative 2. Puts me there. Okay, so again, third quadrant. It's going to end up looking very similar to that other one we did. Okay, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. My x squared, negative 2 squared, is 4. y squared, negative 2 squared, is 4. And so my r squared is 8 which means that r is going to be plus or minus root 8, or if you reduce that, plus or minus 2 root 2, whichever one you prefer. Okay, I think I used root 8 in the notes, so I'll do the 2 root 2 for this one, just to vary it up a little bit. Okay, and then tangent theta equals y over x, negative 2 over negative 2 is 1, if I reduce that. And so what angles would give me a tangent of 1? Okay, that would be a pi over 4 angle. And if I want tangent to be positive, I want the pi over 4 in the first and third quadrants. So first quadrant would be pi over 4. Third quadrant is 5 pi over 4. And then their respective negatives, sub negative coterminals, subtracting 2 pi would be negative 7 pi over 4 and negative 3 pi over 4. Okay. Okay, so your angles. We have something pi over 4, something 5 pi over 4, something negative 7 pi over 4, and something negative 3 pi over 4. So the question is, which r do I use? Well, pi over 4, if I graph that radial line, that would be in the first quadrant. I want to be in the third for my coordinate point, so I want the negative r, the negative 2 root 2, or the negative root 8. 5 pi over 4, on the other hand, I'll do this radial line in blue, is in the third quadrant, and so I want a positive r, so I land on that coordinate point. Um, so I'm going to use the positive 2 root 2, or the positive root 8. Negative 7 pi over 4 is the same radial line as pi over 4, so it'll be negative 2 root 2. And negative 3 pi over 4 is the same radial line as 5 pi over 4, so it'll have the same r, 2 root 2. Okay? Okay, last one here, 5, 0. I'm going to do a quick sketch of that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0 would be right there on the x-axis. Okay, x squared, so 5 squared is 25, plus y squared, 0 squared is 0, r squared, which means square rooting both sides, r is plus or minus 5. Okay, 
Tangent of theta equals y over x, zero over five is zero, so what angles give me a the tangent theta of zero? Okay. That would be zero, negative pi, and pi. So this one I'm only actually gonna have three angles. Um, now there are others, right, outside of negative two pi and two pi, um, but we're restricting our thetas here between negative two pi and two pi. Okay, so something zero, something negative pi, something pi. Okay, zero's radial line, if I graphed that, would look like this. And so I want a positive r, because I'm going to send myself out along that zero radial line. And so positive r would be five. Okay? Um, for the negative pi and the pi, if I graphed their radial lines, they would go the reverse direction. And so I'd want a negative r for negative pi and pi, because a positive r for negative pi and pi would send me to the left. I want to go to the right. I want to go away from negative pi and pi. So I actually want the negative r for those two. Okay, if you have any other questions from objective one, if this extra practice wasn't enough, anything that didn't get answered, let your teacher know we're here to support you.